So we're trying to figure out why did Mark Zuckerberg buy Oculus Rift? Uh, why does a guy who owns a social network need a virtual reality thing on your face? And uh, Nubis Technologies is here because they're thinking about some of the same things. How, how do you mix social networks with, art, uh, with augmented reality? And uh, we're going to see what their thinking is right now. Well, I'm Yuval Herzog. Uh, I'm originally from Israel. Uh, I'm a technological enthusiast. I started programming at the age of six. At the age of 12, I already had a mini company that did a custom uh, application for businesses. And I grew in the Israeli startup community and went from one company to another and started uh, help starting the voice of IP revolution back in the days uh, with the company called Vocaltech and had the startup after that uh, that was sold successfully. And then I went traveling a bit around the world and uh, landed in Australia for a backpacking tour and find myself again, one thing leading to another, another company, another acquisition. And until last year that we, myself and other people started this new cool technology with other like-minded people that started very early in the age to deal with technology, very enthusiastic about it. And actually that's what they do for fun. So yeah. we work by day on technology and by not, we work on technology because that's what we do for fun. Yeah. So uh, Facebook just bought o Oculus Rift for $2 billion. And, and we're trying to figure out, well, uh, why did he buy it? I, I, I have a thesis that he bought it to make Facebook cool. Uh, but on the other hand, he keeps saying, well, uh, no, this could be maybe the, the future of wearables, the future of operating systems that are going to interact with you and your social behaviors, right? And so what is it that you guys are doing? Because you're sort of eating at the same idea, right? We're sort of in the same place. Uh, it's in the same family of places. It's not really the same place. I think your thesis is actually somewhat correct. I think both elements are correct. I think Zuckerberg did it because it's cool. But I think the coolness effect is exactly what social networking needs. Not because it's, it's lacking in its current form, but it's progressing. And the way to progress is to make it more uh, part of life today is by use of new technologies and radical uh, exponential technology, such as uh, virtual reality and augmented reality. We came to this from a different angle. We came to this from a, a, a way of how can we enrich a social engagement of human life and make people stop looking down a, a screen all day. We saw that this caused severe social dissonance with, with people. Uh, you see cases of depression, of uh, social anxiety, and introversion a lot more than you've seen in previous years. And it seemed like the world needs some sort of technology to bring the virtual world and the real human touch together back again. And the solution is with a technology that uses social networking and augmented reality to mix those two worlds together. Yeah, and we build exactly that at, at South by Southwest this year. I, you know, I'm still using mostly my phone, but I I have Google Glass as well and, and a few other toys. Um, but I was watching uh, all sorts of uh, chat rooms to know where to go because there's uh, 200 different bands going at one time. I don't know, 200, maybe uh, 80 different bands going at one time, and you're watching your friends. Uh, to know what party is cool, what party has a short line, what party has a long line, what party has food, what party has good alcohol, what party has yeah. a good band, blah, blah, blah. And so we're always looking at our phones doing this, right? What is it that Nubis is doing? Why, why do we need a new augmented reality for uh, social networks? To, so do, the, to do just even that use case where I'm looking around, I want to look around town and see where the hot things are. Social networking, by definition, is about me. It's all about me. That's also the definition of Gen Y and Gen Alpha and Gen Z. Um, but what's happening to social networking, it's not just about me. It's also become hyper-local. It's about where I am right now. We're taking, and we're not the first, taking social networking and putting in the context of where I am right now and in the future, what am I doing and it want, it, in what mood I am and it what part of my life uh, I'm at on, on a social context. Am I at work right now? I'm looking for 
professional things? Am I uh, at home looking at other things or uh, am I with a, a social encounter like in a pub and I'm looking at Facebook? And what, we, what we've done is we took the social networking world and trimmed it a bit and digested it a bit for the user to see, okay, what's relevant to that user right here, right now? For example, um, I'm at a certain pub and I want to see if who's, who, who's my, of my friends is nearby to where I am. I will get a notification about it, telling me, hey, Joe's just entered a pub next door. You might want to catch up. It's better than to hear the next day, oh, why didn't you tell me that you're there? We completely missed each other if I knew you're there. Another, another example is if I'm walking down Bourbon Street in uh, New Orleans and I love a specific band of blues and uh, the system knows that I'm like uh, that band of blues because it, it, it sees the tags a lot in my tweets and in my Instagram, uh, it will actually be able to analyze the context that I am. I'm in a social context and I love blues and it will pick up people tweeting about blues and this particular bands, it will be able to show me that and to pop up, listen, this blues uh, uh, band is now appearing next to you. Well, let's see it so we have some context of why you're different than Facebook or Twitter, right? Absolutely. All right. So, our application works on, uh, on Windows mobile phone and Android, and in the future it's going to work on Apple devices, iOS. Yeah. And eventually it's going to work on all, all, all sorts of wearables, such yep. as Google Glass and Vuzix Glass and Glass App and for the Well, we'll talk about it because you have some uh, wearable computers over here. Yes, right? correct. What you see here is a nearby list of your regular geosocial feed. Uh, you will see here updates from Facebook, uh, uh, Instagram, Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, and Foursquare. Now, this is not something you invented. This is an existing market called GeoSocial, which is growing very rapidly. Facebook just recently started doing their own uh, similar feature called Facebook Nearby. So we know there's a big demand on that, and this is a growing yep. market. What we added to that is the ability to take this and change this to an augmented reality view that you allows you to look around. Yeah. And, and you see those people on uh, those tweets and the Instagram uh, updates happening in the, in the actual direction they are. And if I look, take this down, I will see a map view of all those updates happening around me. And I'll be able to turn the phone so I'll know exactly what the relative direction that they are to me. Yeah. And we'll be able to catch up with friends and with the even random people that I share the same interest as I am. Yep. This makes a lot of sense when you have something like a Google Glass or an Oculus Rift, right? Absolutely. So, so mm, interesting. All right, let me sit back down. So um, it's it's because we're putting so much more into social networks today, and we're starting to get comfortable with uh, tagging the tweets or the four square check-ins with the location, right? And now you can overlay it on a map, and if you're wearing a glass or something, I can move my head and see, oh, my friends are all over at that bar over there. Right? Correct. Is that what you're trying to get to? Is this, is, this, is, this is the initial direction. The initial direction is to know what's happening in the nearest vicinity, yeah. uh, in the kilometer, in, in the one Well, there's been lots of companies like that, like Sonar, and uh, I, there's a whole bunch of them. Facebook bought one, and uh, highlights out there. There's lots of people trying to do this, but I, I think we're heading into a world where uh, there's enough data there that matters. A, a year ago, two years ago, people weren't comfortable enough turning on the location of their mm -hmm. phone and weren't thinking of checking into places like on Facebook, right? Mm -hmm. Now a lot of people are doing that, right? A lot of people are doing that and a lot of people learned how to control the privacy yeah. system. Before that, people just shared it publicly. You can still see your public feed full of people sharing the location to everyone. People now know how to trim it down to show them to who it's relevant for, to their friends, their family, to the second social uh, circles, and so forth. So people initially reacted with enormous fear and, yeah. and, and concern about, wow, I, I, my 14-year-old my daughter is sharing a location, what, what is she doing? But in time, people will know that the, the, the privacy aspect of it is just another inherited capability of the yeah. platform. What, is this app out yet, or do you have users, or is this coming out? Tell me. So this app, this is the first generation of the app, and yeah. it's uh, operating for the last six months. And we what have you learned by the first users using this? Uh, what have they been telling you? And what have you learned about building the system that makes it work? 
Um, the first thing we learn from our users is their reaction. Say, oh my God, this is so creepy. I've got to have that. <laughs> Which caused us by surprise. Why? First of all, why do you think it's creepy? This is the public feed. This is your feed that you put publicly. You can control it. Second of all, if it's so creepy, well, do you still want to use it? And, 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 and the fact remains that people start reacting to that how creepy it is, but then they thought, actually, you know what? I can actually find my friends and I can do all this other cool stuff yeah. with that. But it was quite funny to us to see that the first reaction was, oh my God, it's so creepy. Yeah. It, uh, where do you think this is going? Cause this uh, is still a little rough today because, uh, you know, there's not enough data. I mean, in San Francisco there is, but if you're in Kansas, you know, there's not a whole lot of people tweeting about location. And, and there's not a lot of choices to, you know, everybody knows there's three bars, you know, in small, some small town, it, right? Yeah. And everybody knows where everybody is. And when you're at South by Southwest and there's 15 uh, things to do and you don't know where any of them are and you have to look up on a map and blah, 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 then, it, then this kind of thing becomes much more interesting. It's like, oh, where are all my friends at, right? Yeah. Where do you think this is going? So what we think from, this gives you a solution for the near for the mile and up to 10 miles of what's happening in my city. Where we see this going, the greatest benefit is going to be what's happening in this room, what's happening in this conference venue. What's the name of this guy I'm talking with right now because I can't remember and how do I know him. Yeah. That's where we have the second generation of our application. Okay. That shows the capability of uh, uh, the, the same functionality taken to the next level. Yeah. And what you see here, oh, so the app was on. What you see here is if you take this and look at my face, yeah. you have the capability of uh, facial recognition here. Yeah. Um, it says no matches so far. Yeah, I think the look, look at me, in. look at me. Yeah, it says no matches. Yeah, maybe the lighting can you turn? Still says no matches. Oh, there we go. Confidence. Uh, yeah, it, it, it was. Uh, yeah, I think it's the clock. Look at me. Look at me. Don't look at the monitor. Da, da, da. Yeah, it's still. I think the li that's a strong light from here that it kill kills it. Uh, okay. Anyways, it's still. Yeah. All right. So this is just al yeah. this is alpha version of the uh, application, but this gives. Oh, <laughs> now it jumped up. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. All right. I think this is going to be done with beacons, by the way, uh, because in your, uh, well, you don't have an iPhone, but in an iPhone, uh, it has a beacon. Correct. You know, it spits three numbers in the air, and now I know who, who I'm standing with, right? But still, you need to apply it to a person. iBeacon gives you where they are in the room, but not who that person. If I have three people that I'm talking to, iBeacon will struggle to say which face belongs to which person. Yeah. With well, this technology, will complete it and complement it to, to, to have the information floating around that person's head, which is extremely powerful when you think of using any small glasses yeah. and talking to a person and saying, oh, I'm, I'm speaking to you, and, and I see your Facebook photo floating around your face, and uh, okay, that's a nice bikini shot that you have there, but yeah. uh, not really my uh, <laughs> cup of tea. But, <laughs> but it, it, it enriches the human interaction level. Yeah. And, and furthermore, it stops me from lowering my head let me just check your Facebook to see what's in because I have this information flowing into the conversation. That's so. the idea. I, I think Google Glass is still three or four years away from being a consumer thing that most people are going to be comfortable with because that, that makes you look dorky. Right? Exactly. Yeah, no. <laughs> and and uh, you walk up to me and I'm like, oh, what are you doing? Uh, are you watching porn on that? Yeah. <laughs> um, and so we need the glass to evolve a few clicks a few times bef uh, before this capability is possible. But Absolutely. You can see where the trend lines are heading, right? We're seeing a half a billion tweets a day already. Foursquare is still very popular. I'm, I'm using uh, the new Swarm app, and I see lots of my friends on it. Facebook is getting a lot more check-ins about location because people see the value of that. and. and and uh, also, when you tag somebody in a photo, you want to tag them where, where they were as well and say something about them. Oh, we're having a great time at this concert or whatever, right? Um, and another interesting evolution is that it's what's happening with the Pan-Asian network. Network like, like, social network like Line that, and, and QQ and WeChat that are growing tremendously. That's in China, yeah. That's also in, in the States here. So, so, yeah. so a lot of the Asian... Uh, 
are looking at that uh, and Transcend that are about to have an IPO for the Alibaba are looking to, to for other companies that they can actually launch into the American market, and and these these markets are a lot more hungry for a lot more engagement and graphical element in the social environment, which I I, I think is going to drive a worldwide change of people not just want to see the text of an update, but want to see the person attached to that and and, and yeah. in what context they are. It's going to be really interesting to see what kinds of wearables uh, get adopted and where. Um, I can certainly see uh, wearing something like an uh, Oculus Rift on the couch and playing a game. I'm not so sure I want to wear an Oculus Rift out in the street somewhere. It's, uh, first of all, it's virtual, so uh, uh, it would have to evolve to include the real world in there and become a true augmented reality. I think that's going to come next year. but. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I think that I think what's what's common between Oculus Rift VR and augmented reality wearables is the element of immersion. To, to immerse per, a person in a world of data and information. Yeah. This, this is what's common to those platforms, and I think this is the trend. This is all going. Yeah. Uh, how many users do you have so far, and what, uh, how sticky is this uh, so far? I, my prediction: it's not very sticky today until we head into a world where we even have another couple of leaps. But I, I, I wanted to meet you because um, uh, this stuff is coming, right? Mm -hmm. three, uh, three, four, five years from now, it's coming. You might be a little early, and that's always a fun thing for an entrepreneur is, yeah. are you too early, are you uh, too late, right? <laughs> the timing of window, market windows is funny. But this technology is coming because of the amount of data we're putting on the world. Right? Correct. So what's your challenge? I guess what's your challenge for the... Uh, well, first of all, what are you learning from the users? Uh, how many users do you have so far? So we, we just hit about uh, 50,000 users and getting a very short time as we, as we see it. Yeah. It's not a massive amount of, of uh, updates, but again, considering that we have no funding. Twitter, Twitter uh, after six months had 13,000 users. So, yeah. uh, you know... We're pretty happy with the numbers. The, uh, we're not complaining. The problem is uh, our expectations have gotten completely out of whack because some people get millions of users in the first week now. You know, it's, yeah, it's pretty crazy. But, uh, you know, people forget Twitter took uh, a long time to ramp up. And I think this is going to be that same way. Uh, how sticky are the users? Are, are they are they so, sticking around with you? With so, so we see again a huge uptick in, 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 in people downloading and using it for the first time, and then it goes down. But we see a growing trend of people that have repeated using that. We see a lot of people that are using it like five times a day, and then reducing to three times to, to two twice, and then re remaining with twice a day checking this uh, about three minutes a day. Yeah. To, just to see what's happening around. I know that myself and, and George that are traveling here in, 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 in the States, this is one of the best tools we use to see, okay, let's go into Silicon Valley and see what's happening around. We find a lot of events that's happening based on people's tweets. Uh, we just saw that there's a big launch, a building next door right here, and yeah. we call it that, and other sum summits that's happening right next to where we are. So it helps us to get some, some bearing on where am I and what's happening on the social network around me. Very cool. it's, it's quite a good tool for that. How is this funded? How did you, how did you um, um, build this, I guess? Funding a startup in Australia is quite different than funding a company in the States or in Israel, and yeah. that I'm used to. So we have to come up with a, a different type of uh, engagement. Uh, so we have, to our startup, two arms. Uh, one arm is a consulting arm for high-end consultancy based on our l l long experience in different technology. And this arm is used to fund the other arm, which is our innovative startup. And both arms actually benefit from each other because in the inno innovative startup arm, we learn a lot of stuff and we apply that to our customers that we give those services to. Very cool. Yeah. Well, cool. I, I'm uh, looking forward to see where this all goes and what I, how this field evolves. Uh, there's been a, uh, I think we're beyond the first round of uh, apps that show you some social stuff around you. Foursquare is a, probably the leader in that world. And now we're heading into a new world where because of the data flows, we have a lot more data. Like, like you said, the building launched next door. They just built a new building and they, they're having a party there. Uh, is showing up because there's enough data. Five years ago, there wasn't enough yeah. data. And, and now the data flows are, are getting there and people are using phones to tell us where they are. I, at music festivals, this is going to be fun, you know, hold it up and see where all my friends, what, you know, what, what people are saying about that stage or that stage or that stage. And 
stuff like that. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be very it. interesting. We are now working on a few other technologies to put into that. It's going to make it a lot more sticky, a lot more, a lot, the utility aspect of it is going to grow tremendously. So. Yep. Right. Well, cool. Thanks for coming in. Where do we uh, get it and learn? where do we learn more about it? So the name of the app is called Alfega. It's a combination of Alpha and Omega. I believe the beginning yeah. and the end of the social engagements and, and the beginning of a new stuff. And it's available on the Windows Phone Store and on Android uh, Google Play. Very cool. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Robert.